I think that whenever we're studying the history of war and combat, and different battles that, that have happened throughout history, it becomes very easy for us to get caught up in you know troop movements and, and tactics and uh, casualties on, on both sides. Very often, we forget that there's a, another element of human suffering in war and combat, and that is amongst the civilian population. Well, right now, I am here at Evergreen Cemetery in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, and right here is the grave of Jenny Wade, who is the only civilian casualty from the Battle of Gettysburg. Well, as I mentioned, this is the grave of Jenny Wade, who is the only civilian to have died during the Battle of Gettysburg. It says here that she was 20 years and two months old, killed July 3rd, 1863, while making bread for Union soldiers. And then if you go over here on the other side, it says, Whatsoever God willeth must be, though a nation mourn. And you can see where a lot of people have visited this grave and left coins to show that uh, to show that they were here. But today we are going to go to the home of Jenny Wade and see where she spent her final moments. Well, here is the Jenny Wade house. Now, uh, things in Gettysburg, of course, are a lot different than what they were in the 1860s. Uh, and as a matter of fact, this is not technically Jenny Wade's house. This is the house of her sister. Uh, on the first day of the battle, uh, Jenny Wade was in her home, which was more in the town of Gettysburg. So right now I'm, I'm facing to the north where most of the fighting on the first day would have occurred. So Confederate troops would have been coming in this direction. Well, Jenny Wade fled to her sister's house where she thought she would be, you know, away from the fighting. So here on the left, uh, this is the north side. Here on the right is the south side. And uh, what they would find over the next two days is that they were going to be right in the firing line of the Confederates in the Union. What we are looking at now is the north facing side of the Jenny Wade house. And I was mistaken. I thought that there was just one bullet that went through a door and killed Jenny Wade. Uh, it turns out that they counted over 150 bullet strikes on this house. And you can see a lot of the, uh, the bullet damage here today. So those are a few strikes. Um, if you go over here, here's another place where the, the brick has been chipped. Here's another spot where it got right in between the bricks. And then you can see some more strikes up there. Uh, here's a big one right here. Wow. So uh, the house that was supposed to provide some safety and uh, some refuge from the battle, not so much. All right, we're gonna go inside and uh, 
take a look and see what the inside of the Jenny Wade house looks like. All right, so uh, I just got inside the home here, and, and I do need to make one clarification before I go on. Uh, technically, this is not a house house, it's, it's a duplex. So I just entered in through the south side of the house. The, the south side of the house would have been occupied by a family called the McLeans, and then the north side of the house would have been occupied by Jenny Wade's family, uh, Georgia McClellan, her sister. So anyway, here is the front parlor of the uh, McLean side of the house. Now here on the McLean side of the house, they have everything furnished to look, uh, you know, the way that it might have looked in 1863, which I, I really appreciate. Uh, but really in this room, what I have found most interesting are these three pictures. Now, of course, there in the center, we, we see Jenny Wade, uh, but the, the two gentlemen on either side of her uh, were friends. So they, they grew up in Gettysburg. The guy on the left, his name was Jack Skelly. And on the right uh, was another friend by the name of Wesley Culp. Uh, now, what makes this story really interesting is that whenever the Civil War broke out, uh, Jack Skelly uh, ended up joining with the Union side. He was with a, a Pennsylvania regiment. Wesley Culp who had got a job down in Virginia, ended up staying in Virginia and joining up with the Confederates. I think he ended up with the Stonewall Brigade, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but really, there's, there's kind of a tragic story with these three. So, so Jack Skelly ended up getting wounded at the Battle of Winchester. Uh, somehow or another, Wesley Culp found out about it and went and visited him in a Confederate hospital. Uh, there, there was there was maybe a, a romantic interest between Jenny and, and Jack. So Jack gave Wesley a letter to deliver to Jenny if he ever made it back up to Gettysburg. Well, of course, Wesley Culp does make it up to Gettysburg, but unfortunately, before he delivers the letter, he is shot and killed at Culp's Hill. Jenny Wade is killed in her home on July 3rd, and Jack ended up dying of his wounds like nine or ten days after the battle. Tragic. This is the parlor area on the McLean side of the house. Now, McLean was a stonemason, so they were a little bit more well-to-do. And uh, something that's interesting in this room is this mantle clock was here during the Battle of Gettysburg. So this is one of the original pieces here in the Jenny Wade house. All right, we're gonna go upstairs now. Okay, now as you are going upstairs, the wood on these stairs right here is all original. So all of these boards are original to the home. You can hear me squeaking as I come upstairs. And uh, this first bedroom was the children's bedroom. One quick thing that I want to point out with this bed. Uh, so if, if you look underneath, this is not the original bed to the house, but a replica but you see it's got uh, kind of these rope supports down below and there, there would have been no mattress per se uh, but you would have filled it with straw or hay or feathers uh, or something like that uh, now this frame is what is called a rolling pin frame so you can take this part off right here and before bed, well, you would smooth out the bed with that rolling pin, and that was called hitting the hay. So that's where we get the phrase, hit the hay, whenever, uh, whenever somebody's going to bed. All right, uh, I'm passing out of the children's bedroom and into the bedroom of Mr. and Mrs. McLean uh, here on, again, on the, the north side of the house. Crazy story. So while the battle was going on, there was a 10 pound Confederate parrot shell that hit on this side of the home. It went all along the floor, blasted through this brick, 
and lodged over in this corner of the home. Now that's not the original. Uh, we're we're going to take a look at the original later. Uh, but yeah, that's a 10 pound parrot. Uh, or there was a 10 pound parrot uh, artillery shell that blew right through this house. I'm now passing into the north side of the house, which would have been where the McClellans lived. So right now I'm on the McLean side and then passing over into the north side where uh, Georgia McClellan and her husband would have had their bedroom. Now, the bed would not have been up here during the time of the battle. Uh, it, it would have been downstairs and I'll explain why in a minute. But after Jenny Wade died, uh, they, they couldn't move her outside because it was too dangerous. So they ended up bringing her up here and knocked a hole in this wall so that they could safely move her body to the south side of the house. I can tell you one thing that's not going to happen in the Jenny Wade house. Nobody is sneaking up on anybody in here. So we're now moving into the front parlor on the north side of the duplex. So, so this would have been the McClellan side of the house. And if you'll notice, they have a bed set up here in the front parlor. And you might be asking yourself, why would there be a bed in the front parlor? Well, that's because just a few days before the battle, Jenny Wade's sister, Georgia McClellan, had given birth. So while the Battle of Gettysburg was raging outside, Georgia McClellan was in this bed clutching her newborn baby uh, while bullets were striking the side of the house and going through the doors and windows. As a matter of fact, uh, there was one bullet that came through a window uh, this was on July 2nd, struck the mantle, ricocheted, and then hit the bedpost right above her head. Now this is not the original bed frame uh, that, that Georgia McClellan was in. But my gosh, they had to have just been terrified. Okay, now again, the bed frame is not original, but this, this mantle is bullet hole and over here bullet hole that is so crazy to me I am leaving the front parlor now and, and entering into this back room. Uh, and on the morning of July 3rd at, at 8.30, a 20-year-old Jenny Wade was right here. And she was preparing bread for Union soldiers. And just to offer herself a little extra measure of protection, she, she opened this door, was preparing bread right here in this very spot whenever a bullet passed through this hole entered through this hole and then struck Jenny in the back and killed her. This really is quite remarkable. So again, this is the original dough tray that Jenny Wade was leaning over whenever a Confederate bullet struck her in the back and uh, I'll give you a little closer look at the the bullet strikes so Jenny was about she was not very tall she was about five foot tall maybe a, a shade over is what I'm told so even though that doesn't look like it's very high off the floor if if she's bending over uh, working working this dough to make bread um, yeah, 
would have hit her right in the back. How unfortunate. And that's where the bullet passed that killed the only civilian casualty in the Battle of Gettysburg. Now, they have a few items here that are tied to Jenny Wade. Uh, for example, they have a few envelopes. This one is addressed to Jack Skelly, and uh, this one is addressed to Jenny Wade from Jack. Uh, here is a picture of Jenny. I mentioned that 10-pound Confederate parrot shell earlier that passed through the house. Well, there it is. That's not a replica. That is the real deal that came out of the house. And uh, funny story, they, they pulled it out of the house about 15 years later. It had lodged uh, on, the, on the south side, uh, and it was still alive. So that could have really been bad. And then this is the piece that really gets me. What you're looking at right here is the original floorboard that was underneath Jenny Wade and is stained with her blood from the day that she was shot on July 3rd, 1863. Wow. I've now moved down to the basement of the Jenny Wade house. Uh, after Jenny's death, as I've already mentioned, they had to move her through the walls to the southern part of the house because it was too dangerous to go outside. Uh, and they brought her down here to the cellar. And as you can see, uh, they, they've kind of got a depiction of Jenny being laid out to rest. Uh, they also have a painting in here. Uh, showing the scene with a couple of Union soldiers and then her grieving family. The only person not shown in the painting is Jenny's mother. And the, the reason for that is, is the artist is depicting uh, Jenny's mother observing and, and mourning uh, the death of her daughter. So anyway, that was the Jenny Wade house. Uh, I'm, I'm so glad that, that we came here today. If you ever visit Gettysburg, you have to come to places like this. Uh, it's easy to go to, you know, Pickett's Charge and the Round Tops and, and then move on. But if you do that, you're not getting the, the full story of the Battle of Gettysburg. Uh, in order to do that, you, you have to, to kind of get off the beaten path a little bit and have to come to places like the Jenny Wade House. Uh, very, very interesting experience. Learned a lot today.